Here's an important question. Are we saved by our faith? Are we justified, delivered from sin by our faith or by the faith of Jesus Christ? And if the answer is by the faith of Jesus Christ, then what is the purpose of our faith? Now, critical question. And the misunderstanding of this, of this question and the way certain people answer it will, will decide where one puts one's confidence, whether on Jesus Christ or on humanity. Now, here's a verse that no translation I have found has been able to screw up. Romans 3.22. Let's start with verse 21. I've given you this verse before. Yet now, apart from law, a righteousness of God, and that is what we're all after, righteousness, being declared right. And if you're declared righteous, then your sin doesn't matter anymore. And what's to stop you from being in the presence of God for eternity? That's right. A righteousness of God is manifest. That's what we've all been waiting for. Because we are tired of trying to establish our own righteousness. Some people aren't. Some people like to keep doing it. But it's a roller coaster ride of success and failure. This is why you vacillate between rejoicing in Christ and life killing guilt. We're not vexed by this anymore because we realize that this is not about us, it's about another. Our faith doesn't accomplish anything. Not a damn thing. Our faith does not accomplish anything. It only causes us to believe what happened through Jesus Christ's faith. I'm going to go on in Romans 3 here, then I'm going to go to Galatians 2.16. But let's talk a second about the faith of Christ. What was the faith of Christ? He believed his Father. His Father set him to earth for sent him to earth for to be a propitiation a shelter for the sins of the world he would more than a shelter he would take them away and jesus christ knew that he had to conquer death death is the big problem in humanity death is what causes us to sin so he went to the grave and listen the faith of christ was that his father had purposed him to be this thing and that his father would raise him from the dead if Jesus Christ didn't really die, if Jesus Christ, uh, if the whole death of Christ was a sham, that is, only his body died, but Jesus Christ himself went to heaven, he would have no fear. He would have no fear of death. He would have not have to have any confidence in God to raise him from the dead. So the death of Christ is critical to understand the faith of Christ. Faith is an assurance of things that are not being observed. So. Jesus Christ was not observing his resurrection. He knew that he was going to die, literally die. He was going to not exist for three days. And he had faith, confidence in his father to raise him from the dead. And that's exactly what happened when Jesus Christ opened his eyes in the tomb and he realized, oh my God, my father is great. He promised me he would raise him from the dead. What, what faith? This is fantastic faith. This is what blew my mind. The faith of Christ loomed so large to me when I realized that Jesus Christ actually died. He did not go away for three days to split around some other place. He went to the spirits in prison after he was roused from the dead. I've been through that with you, Second Peter. All right. Now, let's go on here. A propitiatory shelter through faith in his blood for the display of his righteousness. Notice the subject of Romans 3. It's his righteousness, God's righteousness. That's what we look toward. That's what we depend on. That's what saves us. Because of the passing over of the penalties of sins which occurred before in the forbearance of God. All these sins collected in the past. Because God just, in the forbearance of God, he let them go. He temporarily covered them until he could take care of them permanently. And he does that through Christ, toward the display, yet this is always working in the Old Testament, toward the display of his righteousness in the current era. That's where we're living now. Aren't these passages great? So plain. This is Romans 3, 21 through 28. Critical verses. Read them on your own. For him, Jesus Christ, to be just, or maybe it's talking about God there. Yeah. 
for God to be just and a justifier of the one who was of the faith of Jesus. The faith of Jesus. We're of the faith of Jesus. We tag onto it. We attach our little cars to his faith. Our faith doesn't accomplish anything. The engine of the train is what makes the train go down the tracks. All the cars have no engines. The cars on a train, they have no independent source of power. They just hook on to the engine and the engine pulls them. They, they don't accomplish anything. They're along for the ride. Ladies and gentlemen, we are along for the ride. Our faith accomplishes nothing. Our faith is a caboose attached to the engine of salvation, the engine of righteousness, and that is Jesus Christ's faith. His faith was what got things done. He believed his father. He knew his father wasn't a liar. He found out sometime during his life that he was the Messiah. That would be a sobering realization. He realized that he was going to die for the sins not only of humanity, but of the universe. And he knew that he would have to conquer death. And to conquer death, he enters it. Fights fire with fire, you might say. Enters the death state. <sighs> Let's himself become sin. All the sins of the world were placed on his head. And because of that, God turned away. Not absolutely, but he became the repository of all of our failings, all of our misses. Can you imagine what that would be like? And then your father tells you after that, that's bad enough. After that, you must enter the death state. That's the most horrifying thing that humanity can face. The death state. Body, soul, spirit don't exist. The life force that animates you at death returns to God. There's no consciousness in that life force. The consciousness comes when the life force, that is the spirit of God, joins with a body. The body goes to the grave and the soul just disappears. There's no consciousness. The soul speaks of your consciousness, your awareness, gone away. And the person is said to be dead. The person is said to be dead. Nobody ever says, though, their body died. That's not the language of Scripture. Bodies don't die. People die. People die. Jesus Christ died. That took faith to trust that his Father would raise him from the dead. He, <clears throat> the faith of Jesus Christ. Now, Galatians 2.16 says this. You know what? I, I'm going to save this for tomorrow. Because I don't want to stop talking right now about the faith of Jesus Christ. But what I'm going to do tomorrow is I'm going to bring you different verses. Many different verses that speak of the faith of Christ. Because again, this is the power. And I'm going to show you how some common English translations have twisted the translation. They will take verses that talk about the faith of Christ and they will put in the translation faith in Christ. Ooh, that is a hideous departure. But what it is, it's not translating, it's interpreting. What it does when you take a simple word, this is why I say you need to pay attention to words. A simple word like of or in. Ah, oh, what difference does it make, Martin? It's only two letters. What difference does it make? The faith of Christ or faith in Christ. Faith of Christ is another way of saying Christ's faith. Does that save us? Or does faith in Christ save us? The difference could not be more profound. And this is the deception that Christianity is pushing on the world. That you are not justified by Jesus Christ's faith. You're not saved by Jesus Christ. You're saved by, not the faith of Christ, but you're saved by faith in Christ. What does that do? It automatically 
takes the attention away from Christ's faith. It takes the importance away from Christ's faith, and it places that squarely on your shoulders. You have to have faith in Christ. Do you have faith in Christ? How is your faith in Christ? That's the question they all want to know. It's the wrong question. What we need to discover is, what was the extent of the faith of Christ, and what was Christ faithful about? What was he facing that required faith? faith was it the fact that he was God's offering for the sins of the world was it that he was facing obliteration that he was facing non-existence and that in spite of everything that appeared to be against him he believed his father click bang boom that is the faith that saves us what is our faith what what do we believe we believe that Christ did that let me say that again we believe that Christ did that does our belief that Christ did that make us justified and saved that's what Christianity tells us they tells us that they tell us that our faith is all important, all critical. And unless you believe it, just you're not saved, you're not justified, you're not nothing. That's what they tell us. But in fact, that's a lie. But that lie is furthered by mistranslations. I'm going to show you those mistranslations. And I just realized just now that I don't have my microphone in here. Son of a gun. So the sound... I didn't even realize that until now that my regular microphone's not in here. Again, this 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 this, this video is a mess. The second half of this video is going to sound like crap, and I just now realized it because to tell you the truth, at the beginning of the video, I tried to put a sunshade up here because my phone overheats and then it shuts down because I'm in my car and the greenhouse effect, you know, affecting my phone here. And uh, my camera and my, my sun shield fell on the camera. The camera fell in between the seats. My, my phone, which is also my camera, fell in between the seats. I had to fetch it. So it was a, and and it, you know how things, when things fall, they roll? Do you think that happens by accident? When things fall down, they roll into some inaccessible place? No. God that does that on purpose to frustrate you so that you can overcome it, so that you can struggle against the adversary. Yes, the adversary can be as subtle and as deadly as making shit roll away. So you have to go find it. And then I had to put the camera in a new place. I know. Terrible trials, right? Well, hey, nonetheless, I don't take this lightly. I don't take it lightly that Satan is opposing this. And now I forgot to put my regular microphone on here. I don't, you've never seen my microphone. Here's what it looks like. Isn't that cute? It's got a little fuzzy thing that keeps the ambient noise down and the wind down. And th th this little thing plugs into my phone. Who cares about any of that? I just wanted to tell you what's what's happening here and why the, the second half of this video sound is not going to be all it could be. But that's all right. All right. It is what it is. I like quality, so I'm, I'm a little ticked off about that. But you know what? It's the message that counts. Uh, not the messenger, not the messenger, or not the means of communicating. Good thing I came up close to the camera like this to talk to you. So tomorrow I'm going to give you verses that prove to you that the most important thing, the most important part of this entire salvation process is Jesus Christ's faith. That's the engine. We're the caboose. <laughs>